a new day, the beginning of a new week, a new opportunity to serve the Lord. Thank you for joining us on Hope Today. We're going to find out about how different, so many different ways to serve the Lord, so many different ways to make ourselves a blessing for the kingdom of God. I'm Tom Hollis. I am here with Anna Schmidt. Anna, we've got somebody who's doing that. Yeah, well, it's so good to have you with us. We love that you start your week off with us here on Hope Today. And in just a few minutes, we get to talk with a children's author about how we as parents and grandparents can help our kids build an authentic faith that withstands the pressures of life. Our guest Simone Anderson will join us live here in the studio to share three simple and powerful ways we can help our kids see God's love in their own unique story. And Tom, you know, as a parent, as a grandparent, I know for both of us, it's just been a vital importance to just represent Jesus to our kids. And I don't have grandkids yet, but I imagine there's so much joy just in that. Just wait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. You know, it is so important that, uh, and, and actually, you know, children's books are a huge part of that. I mean, the, the, just the sitting on the lap and oh. the reading, I love that. Yes. I love it with my kids. I love it with uh, my grandkids. Right. It's lots of fun and you get to learn how to do all kinds of voices, you know, right. too, yes. at different times. Well, yesterday we had a wonderful thing I just wanted to share at our church. We had a blessing of the bikes. We have a few photos here of, uh, we, just, we had about 50 uh, bi uh, bikers come out and uh, we, uh, we had the opportunity to just share with them, pray with them, uh, bless them in so many ways. I love it. It's uh, a lot of times people, some of them are part of our church and many, many of them are not. I know a lot of churches are doing this now. In fact, uh, I know the, the one church in Murraysville that uh, the Alliance Church there has a huge, uh, thousands of bikes show up. Uh, we're, we've, we've started uh, small, but uh, it's a blessing. I love reaching people that don't necessarily come to the service. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good outreach and yeah. exciting to see the people come out. Absolutely. Well, stay with us because you are going to be able to uh, see how God can guide our children and grandchildren towards a deeper relationship with God. We're gonna learn on this program how being rooted in God's love can make kids spiritually strong. And we're gonna dis discover a new film that showcases how the next generation is, is seeking after God. And uh, actually, when it comes to young people, the Christian community can sometimes be quick to write off Gen Z as spiritually dead, uh, just like a dead end. But in actuality, it turns out that young people around the world are clamoring for the gospel, praise God. Christian filmmaker Chris Worthington decided to seek out the truth about worldwide evangelism. He's the first ever Gen Z director to have a Christian film released in theaters. And our very own Angela Madden is about to be joined by the young filmmaker. But first, let's check out the incredible trailer for his new film that hits theaters today. It's called Multiplied. It all started at the beginning. I guess like any story does. Right here. On YouTube, when I came across several 480p videos of 3.4, 1.6, 1.8 million person crowds that I really liked a lot because they were all gathering for one reason, Jesus. And I thought to myself, how have I never heard of this before? So after doing some more research and reading articles claiming that these crowds were fake, I got a plane ticket and went to see for myself and discovered a whole world that the media isn't covering. Hallelujah! But if you don't believe me, come and see for yourself. Multiplied opens in theaters beginning today. And joining us now is the film's director, Chris Worthington. Chris, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you for having me, seriously. Chris, we are so excited that you joined and we are thrilled to be seeing that Multiplied comes into theaters today. Tell us a little bit about what you hope the audience gains from watching. Yeah, I would say uh, one thing, uh, be encouraged. You can preach the gospel. The gospel is for anyone who belongs to Christ. It's the great commission. It's time for all of us to be raised up and multiplied all over the world to preach this one message, the message of Jesus, the gospel. That's, yeah. 
I love it, Chris. And you've been making films since you were a little boy. I love that you have found <laughs> and explored this new space. And what is one thing that you feel like you've learned that you didn't know quite exactly how you know it now anyways after doing this documentary? Yeah, so in church, you know, you always hear about how God's moving around the world and it almost becomes like a cliche. But uh, I discovered for myself while filming Multiplied that God really is moving all over the world. Um, and I figured out that Jesus is in the saving business and business is booming right now all over the globe. And uh, yeah, so I, I would say <clears throat> Jesus is moving in an absolutely incredible way in Nigeria, in Brazil, in China, um, even in areas of America. Yes, even though everyone... Keep saying Christianity is declining in America. Uh, we believe that actually another Jesus revolution is about to rise it up because the Holy Spirit is going to spark it. Not a man. The Holy Spirit is going to spark it. The only man it would be would be the person Jesus Christ. So, yeah. I love that. That's right. Isaiah 9, right? There is no end to the increase of his government and of his peace. I love that you were able to capture what God is doing all over the body, all across the globe. What is one of the most impactful moments of ministry that you experienced or saw another experience? Yeah, yeah. So I would say uh, miracles. Uh, no, I mean, if you go to Nigeria to a 400,000 person gospel event in the middle of the bush and, and you start seeing these miracles, literally blind eyes, people who have been blind their entire life, their eyes opening. It's like, what? In, what? That's like biblical stuff here. That's like when Jesus would lay hands on someone and their eyes would open. But it's happening like right now. Uh, and then ears opening, people, tumors just vanishing, uh, crazy supernatural miracles that we're seeing. And then the most important one, the, the best one of all, salvation. Tens of thousands of people raising their hand in these massive events saying, I want to follow Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And uh, just tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in these oceans, these crowds that look like just an ocean of humanity, uh, just giving their life to Christ. Uh, it's, it's shocking. It's, uh, it's shocking in the best way possible. Truly, like even just seeing that clip and seeing those crowds, like it elicits these, this imagery of heaven and also of hell, right? Like these massive crowds of people that we must see come to know Jesus for eternity. Chris, if you were to share one thing with our audience today to encourage them to go out and be that light that those may also come into salvation, what is that one thing you'd share? I would say this, when I was 16 years old, I was suicidally depressed and I wanted to kill myself. And then I was tricked into going to a worship concert. When I went to that worship concert, I had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus Christ. I left that concert with peace and joy resonating out of me. And it's been over 10 years now, one encounter with the Son of God and I was completely set free like that. So this is what I would say for you to go to the theaters on May 20th and 21st. Think of that person that you know who's maybe suicidal, depressed, maybe they don't know why they're alive, maybe they're addicted, invite them to the theater because we're gonna be preaching the gospel, the message of Jesus. And in the same way that the message of Jesus changed my life, it'll change that person's life in Jesus' name. So let me encourage you, invite a non-believer. They'll, they'll be entertained and we'll give them Jesus. So uh, invite that person out to the theater. We're making evangelism easy for you. Come on, I love that, yes. We will see them come by the droves. Um, where can people go to buy their tickets today and tomorrow? Yeah, so you can go to multipliedmovie.com and uh, it's in theaters right now tonight, seven o'clock, seven o'clock, seven ten, depending on the movie theater. We're gonna be in AMC, Regal, Cinemark theaters across the United States. You can get your tickets at multipliedmovie.com or just show up at your theater and get a ticket at the door. You could do that as well. 
Come on. I am so thankful, Chris, that you chose media, you chose entertainment to take it by storm with the gospel message of Jesus Christ. What a powerful, powerful move. And we trust that Multiplied is going to be a brilliant success for you and for the body as a whole. God bless you, Chris. Thank you so much for being with us. And we look forward to seeing Multiplied tonight ourselves. Thank you so much for having me. Stay tuned for more of Hope Today right after this break. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. A recent survey found that 60% of millennials raised in the church have walked away from their faith at some point on their paths. The statistic might be startling, but it also presents an opportunity for parents and grandparents to nurture a deep personal connection with God that goes beyond religious obligation in their children. Our guest today, Simone Anderson, is here in the studio with us to share how we can do our part to help kids see God's love in their own unique story. She also brought her new children's books with her. One is called, God, You Have Always Been With Me, and the other is, Where Is Love? And so, Simone, welcome to Hope Today. I'm happy to be here with you all. Thank you for having oh, me. It's so exciting, you know, that we started the program off looking at young people on fire for the Lord, and yet we know statistics are still saying that, um, that young people are walking away even if just for a time uh, many are coming back some do not yeah. but this is a chance like your passion your heart here you are a young person yes. you are writing children's books so that parents and grandparents have a resource yes. to be able to to share the love of god with them and so we want to know a little bit about your personal story because i understand your passion for storytelling came from some very life transformative events, yes. one of them being the passing of your mom. So share a little bit with us about her life and how she shaped you into the woman that you are today. Absolutely, Anna. So my mother held a very robust <laughs> career in the Air Force. She retired 24 years as a Chief Master Sergeant. I believe that's E9, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And so seeing her, being a witness to her drive, her determination, her ambition, and her perseverance in her own career really was a cornerstone for me to pursue my dreams and to um, really give, give light to my passions and my goals and my desires. My mother is my best friend, not was, because she still is, and she truly was a beautiful example of what it means to trust God. A lot of the times we have a lot of different plans and ideas for our lives and seeing her and how she dedicated her life to God and trust his, trust, trusted his plan and didn't walk in fear but walked in the confidence of the Lord was amazing to me. Yeah. And so with that, I truly believe that she has shaped my endeavors now with bringing families and children closer to Christ through books. Yeah, it's beautiful. It sounds like you had a mom who really lived her faith yes. right in front of you, set a beautiful example. Mm -hmm. And so your encouragement for parents and grandparents today is that there are 
three simple and yet powerful ways that we can help our kids, our grandchildren see God's love in their own stories. And the first that you say is showing appreciation for the world that surrounds us. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. I feel that children in this aspect, of course, a lot of aspects, but children really have a down pact with being enamored with the wonder that surrounds them. Um, being able to slow down and to appreciate the butterflies and the clouds and the flowers and um, the sun on a beautiful day and allowing, allowing our children to still be um, whimsical in that sense and to be able to say, wow, mom, this flower is so beautiful or today looks so great or that cloud actually looks like, I don't know, um, a unicorn because kids have the wildest imagination, which is beautiful. But being able to slow down and just appreciate God's creation and to know that as much time and thought that he took into creating each of us, he took that same regard in creating the world that surrounds us. You're speaking my language because <laughs> I truly believe that, and the Bible even talks about how God created all things yes. for our enjoyment. And yet as adults, we can lose that sense of wonder because we're so busy going here and there, yes. but children are curious and they're excited about what God created. And so as adults, we have such a great opportunity to rediscover our own sense of wonder exactly. through our kids by really slowing down and looking at the world through their eyes to see the beautiful gifts of creation yes. that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And so secondly, mm -hmm. and I'm curious about this when you say, being a mirror is a way that we can help our kids see God's love in their story. So a lot of the time, like when you're getting ready, right? You're getting ready for your day, you're getting dressed, you look in the mirror you really see the external. You see all of the, the different um, shoes and jackets, hats and other accessories that you put on before walking out of the door. But what about the internal? I think that God's love and his wonder and some of his mystery is captured on the inside of us. And as believers, we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is God and God lives on the inside of us. And so being a mirror, if we are able to recognize and identify that God is within us and God's love is within us, then we can kind of give light to our children to say God is within you. Mm -hmm. That we can be positive and beautiful mirrors of Christ in our children's lives so that they can go out in the world and do the same for others. I love that. So can you think of an example? I'm kind of putting you on the spot no, here, but I have a time where you have been a mirror. Like what would a personal example be of that? Something as simple as holding a door at a grocery store. Yeah. I feel that in such a small act, that can really lift someone's spirits. Um, I saw a quote, which I, I don't know if I um, remember who I can give credit for, but it was a quote that spoke about, a lot of people may not know who Jesus is, yeah. but you may be the only example. They may not have read the Bible, but you are a walking embodiment of that. They may not know Jesus, but you know you are the representation. You are God's representative. And so with that question, I'm holding the door. I think that that's a huge thing to, um, to do for others that says, you know, you are important for someone to open the door for you. You are um, valuable, you are loved, and you are important. And so that's a small act, but it can have a huge, you know, impact. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love the, the small things that can open up, open up the door spiritually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking. <laughs> hey, how about that? Anyway, uh, let me ask you about the ideas, though. You're, you're turning out, what's the vision first? Isn't it for like a bunch of books in a year? Or what's it? So within my story, me and God had a very impassioned conversation, yeah. <laughs> um, just really about where he wanted or what he saw my life being at yeah. this point in time. And so writing 12 books, I feel was definitely not in, in my plan, but overall, as things are developing and, and blooming, my goal, which I believe has always been in my heart, is to share what God is doing in mine. Yeah. And I feel that through these books, through each character, through each storyline and the topics that these books cover, it's really, it's speaking to the little girl on the inside of me. And if I'm feeling joy and happiness and all the things from these books, then why not share that with the world and share that with other children and their families? Yeah. 
Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your books. The, the one. beautiful. I, I know. Yeah, these Thank are great. You. Gosh, I loved when my Where kids were love? little. Just like yeah. put them up on my lap and read. And so this first one is called Where is Love? What can, what can children expect from that? Well, um, Where is Love talks about the love of God because, you know, God's love is unconditional. And with this book, the main character, her name is Maria. She's a biracial African-American young girl. She's very inquisitive, like most children are, full of questions and wanting to learn about the world around them. And the book talks about how God's love is in, in nature, in creation. And ultimately, that love is on the inside of us because God created us. So little ones will walk away knowing that one, that they're not alone, right? And two, that God's love is with them, it surrounds them, and it's on the inside of them. Yeah. And the artwork sure, is that? awesome. You have yeah. an artist you work with then? For, yes, yeah. I actually collaborate with several different illustrators. And um, through my um, author journey so far now, I definitely have been presented with the question of why several different illustrators and why not one? I said, well, all of us see God differently. Yeah. And um, one version or interpretation of God is, isn't um, lesser or more important than another. It's all beautiful because we're all made in his image. Yes, and this is a perfect time of year to get out in creation. Yes. So they could read this book. They could take it on a picnic and sit outside That's in a right. beautiful park mm -hmm. and then look at nature around them and yes. be able to apply that. And so we want to make sure we get to this third way that okay. parents and grandparents can help their kids see God's love. And it's caring for those who are less fortunate. Yes, I believe that when you we all live very blessed lives and we're all very fortunate for the things that we have and the experiences that we were able to have as well. Yeah. Being able to take that attention off of ourselves doesn't mean that we're less important, doesn't mean that we're um, less valuable, but it allows us to be able to be the hands and feet of, of Jesus Christ, to meet the needs of others in a very compassionate way um, and to really change people's lives. I really think that a lot of people don't realize that a smile, a compliment, a hug can really Im impact and change the trajectory of someone's mood or even what's happening in their lives in certain seasons. Right, absolutely. You know, you, you have situations where people maybe are going through a difficult time and they're, 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 they don't see any encouragement. Um, just that little bit of encouragement can make all the difference. It really can. And, and just a kind word. Mm -hmm. And your books are doing that, right? I mean, just the book I, I picked up, everybody's happy as they're looking for love, you know, as the little girl's looking for love. Yeah. There's a smile on her face. That brings happiness, that brings joy. And yeah, we need reality, there's difficult times. Yes. But what, what do you say about the encouragement that can be found in these books? I wanna say that with each page and each scripture that is referenced in the books, that they are little stars of, of hope and faith that they can look forward to discovering and that with each book, it really is a stepping stone to get closer to Jesus Christ and to really accept all of what he has to offer for us that is in salvation, that is in relationship with him, that is in intimacy with him. Yeah. And it, your other book is God, You Have Always Been With Me. Mm -hmm. What a powerful truth that is, that we have a God who is not far off, no. He is not distant. He is with us, yes. God with us, and that the Holy Spirit is in us. And so Amen. through that book, what, what can parents and grandparents instill? How, what will kids experience? Kids will experience closeness with Jesus. It is a beautiful introduction for kids to know that, okay, God, you were there before I was in my mom's tummy. Like you were there. Um, when I had a difficult time at school. You're there when I have questions about my life. You're there when I'm eating um, a meal with my friends or my family, that they are not alone. And that even in moments of really deep despair and disappointment and, and frustrations, you know, day-to-day -day living, that God is literally right there. He's not far gone. He's not in the distance. He's literally right by your side. Yeah, absolutely. 
It's so beautiful. Your mama would be so proud of you and how <laughs> you as a young person mm -hmm. have stepped into your faith like full on yes. and that you are wanting to be able to share that with others, with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I love to the story about the Gen Z movie director and <laughs> like going out and really going to all these gatherings with these young people. And yes. I tell you what, my kids are Gen Z and it is so exciting for me to see how my kids are, my oldest, they're like, they're chasing after God and I'm seeing as they have these influential people mm -hmm. around them that are living out their faith authentically that all together God uses the adults to inspire kids to truly live for Christ. And so uh, can you think of an example of other people in your life along your journey who has really represented Christ well? Oh my goodness, we would be here for hours. Uh -huh. um, I feel that in such a pivotal time in my life after my mother recently passed, God in his sovereignty and in his uh, mercy and love for me in that time brought along strong women yeah. that um, really encamped around me and encouraged me, specifically highlighting a women's ministry that I'm a part of. Um, they are located in Louisa, Virginia. They're called Sisters in Christ, and they have all been true anchors for me, as well as my newer friends in Charlotte, where I currently reside, North Carolina, that have really spoken to my calling yeah. and have championed me to the place where I'm at today. Simone, awesome. in just our last minute here, Yes. Where can people get the books? How can they uh, acquire them? Well, n I believe no one is a stranger to Amazon. I know <laughs> me, I, right. I love shopping. But yes, you can find all of my books, my first five books, including the remainder of the total 12 for this year on Amazon, as well as Barnes and Noble online. Well, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. It's such a joy to, yeah. to have you here with us in person. And we just wanna encourage you at home, parents and grandparents, to slow down and really spend that time with your kids, with your grandkids, because time is against us. If you That's haven't right. noticed, it goes <laughs> so fast. And these children grow up so fast and our opportunities to influence, like listen, even when it seems like they're not paying attention, they are paying right. attention. And God will use you in such a big way to leave that lasting impression on your kids for the Lord. Absolutely, and there's so many wonderful ways, just like Where Is Love and, and other uh, books by Simone Anderson. There's ways to reach in and touch that young life. God wants us to do that. Train up the children in the way they should go. That isn't just taking them to church, that's a big part of it, but it's every day sharing those little lessons, sharing those things that make a difference and, and being that consistent witness of who Christ is to you. Have a great day in Him. On tomorrow's Hope Today, live in God's calling for your life. Bible teacher and mentor Rachel G. Scott introduces a fresh perspective on embracing risk and finding peace by relinquishing our own desires to pursue God's vision. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.